All right. Hey guys, welcome to Pursuing Jesus podcast. This is episode 26 and it's entitled Walking in Truth in the Face of Lies. We're going to talk about how to persist when the enemy, when life, when circumstances, when trials are coming against you. How do you stand fast in the truth of the gospel? And so we'll take about 10, 15 minutes max today. This will be a short episode, but I believe it will be powerful and help you to overcome all of the lies that are coming against you. First, I just want to thank you for listening. And listen, I want to invite you to partner with us. There's several ways to do this, and it's because we are unpaid missionaries, and this is a free service. And if you want to help us continue to put out free content like this and more content like this, consider partnering with us. Even a small gift of $5 a month um, would go a long way, especially spread across all of our listeners. Um, You can follow us on Spotify, Apple, or Anchor, and make sure that you turn on notifications, hit the bell so you get updates when I post a new episode. So let's talk about walking in truth in the face of lies. You know, the Bible says that Jesus is the truth. That's what he said when he was on the earth. He said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. And Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Now, the Bible says that no one has seen God at any time. But we have seen Jesus Christ, who is the expressed image of an invisible God. So what it means is if we can't find it in the life of Jesus, then we don't want it in ours. And if it is in the life of Jesus, then we do want it in ours. Now, here is the other side of that. Jesus, not only through the red letters in the Bible and what we read about him in the Gospels, but the Bible says that the word became flesh and dwelled among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the Father and Son of the Holy Spirit, The Word became flesh. That means that the Bible doesn't tell us about Jesus. The Bible is Jesus, and Jesus is the Bible. He is the Word, and the Word is Him. That Word became flesh. And so if we want to know what God is like, then we have to look at the Son. And if we want to know what the Son is like and what the Father is like, because they are two in one, and the Holy Spirit comes in, they are three in one, but it is expressed through the Word of God. So we have the Word of God, we have the image of the person of Jesus Christ, and now we have the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, those who trust in Him, who are filled and baptized in the Holy Spirit, who will reveal to us all things. Come on, we know where to find truth. It's in the Word. And I want to ask you, are you getting in the Word? first question for you today is, are you in the Word of God? How much time do you spend in it? Don't look at this like a religious thing. Just examine yourself and say, man, how much time do I really spend reading the Bible? If I examine myself even now, I'm not consistent. There's days that I'll read for an hour. There's days that I'll read for 15 minutes. There's days where I won't read, but I'll pray. But I've been having this longing almost, this like deep desire to make time for the Word every day. Yes, I I just feel like the Lord is like, yes, I love that you set aside time to pray, not just praying in the car, not just praying at work, not just praying, you know, everywhere you go, which we should do, but like setting aside time. And you know, I preach this all the time and I teach this all the time. That is where intimacy comes from. That's where relationship with God comes from, is when we set aside time for Him, when no one else is looking. We we go in a room, we go in a closet, we close the door, and it's just us. And I'm saying, Lord, I'm here to meet with you. And there's I do that every day, but I don't read my Bible every day. You know, honesty hour. There's some days where I'll just worship the whole time, or I'll pray the whole time, but I feel this pull for myself to make sure that I'm in the Word every day. Not just praying the Word over myself, you know. I know the, I know a lot of the Word and it's in me, but I need to be getting into the Word every day. And so I ask you, examine yourself like I just did, openly in front of all of you who are going to listen. I examined myself and I said, man, I am not a consistent every single day in the Word person, but I'm going to be. Even if it's 10, 15 minutes, even if it's a chapter and then I go into prayer, I want to make sure that I'm in this word every day. Why? Because the word never changes. The word never changes. Emotions change, situations change, 
desires to pray. They can change. We want to pray about this. We want to pray about that. The way that we hear God might change. I used to get a lot of impressions, and then I would get pictures, and now I get, you know, I, I just feel like I get these downloads where I know things. That, that All that stuff is changing. It's dynamic. It's a relationship. But the Word of God, it doesn't change. And so if we're talking about walking in truth, We need the truth in us daily. And God's word is the truth. So number one, we need to be in the truth of God's word. Number two, we need to recognize when something is a lie. You know, Jesus said that uh, my sheep will know my voice. In the voice of the stranger, they will not know. We need to understand when the enemy is coming at us, when he's speaking lies to us, that we've spent so much time with the Lord that we instantly go, oh my gosh, this is not the voice of God. This has to be the enemy or my flesh or whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't know who this is, but it is not God. This is a stranger. This is an intruder. And we do not listen to that. As soon as we realize it's a lie, now we have the ability to dismantle it. The Bible says that we have every tool that we need to tear down strongholds. A stronghold is simply a wrong way of thinking that the enemy has tried to elevate over you to put something between you and the truth of God. So if God is up here, you know, and and I'm here, the enemy tries to get in between that with the stronghold, a ceiling. And the Bible says we have the power and the tools to tear that thing down. Isn't that amazing? We tear down every lie that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ, and we make it obedient to him. We have the ability to do this. And so what does that look like? I've used this example a lot with intrusive thoughts, but it's the same way. I don't care if it's something attacking your faith. I don't care if it's something from your past trying to see if it can still own you. I don't care if it's a familiar spirit. I don't care what it is. If there is a lie that is coming against you, you have the ability to walk in truth by submitting to God. When that lie comes in, you go straight to prayer. You say, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that this is not me, this isn't my thought, this isn't what I want, this doubt that's coming in, Lord, I, I disagree with that, I rebuke that doubt, that's not my doubt, I don't doubt you, Lord, I, I trust in you, this nasty thought that's coming in, Father, that's not me, I want nothing to do with that, I am a person of integrity and purity and honor, and you've made me holy, blameless, and righteous in your sight because of the blood of Jesus, thank you for loving me, God, if the, if this judgmental, you know, shame, guilt, condemnation comes in, Father, thank you that this is not who I am. This is not how you see me. You don't condemn me. Your word says in John 3, 17, that Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I thank you that there's no shame and guilt. The Bible says that regret produces death, but godly sorrow leads to repentance. Father, I thank you that this is condemnation. This is the voice of the enemy, and I turn away from that right now. I I focus on you, God. I thank you that you love me and you sent your son. And right there, you begin to go into prayer, affirming yourself in the word. Isn't that powerful? Now, the way that you win is you just always do that. It's not like, well, how long do I have to do that? Because no, 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 you just do that now. Like that is it. That's spiritual warfare because the enemy's after your faith. And the enemy knows at large that if he touches a Christian or speaks to a Christian, most Christians don't know God's voice. Most Christians that I've met don't have a a strong personal relationship with the Lord. They don't even know that God will speak to them in the prayer closet. They think that they have to hear from God through maybe a dream once once in a while or through a prophet or something. No, God wants to speak to you all the time. But sometimes we don't even listen for God or we don't even know that God's speaking because we're so getting overwhelmed and filled with the lies and the voice of the enemy, and we're not doing anything about it. And the Bible says we're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. I think a lot of people just don't understand what's going on. So I'm here to tell you, not every thought that comes across your brain is yours, especially if it is against God's nature to love you, to correct you, to guide you, but not to shame you or to guilt trip you or to condemn you. So that's what you do. You take that thought captive by pulling it down. You're saying, no, I will not believe in this. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. And you begin declaring the truth. Now listen, 
that prayer might have sounded awesome to you and encouraging. I don't have it written down. I, that's the Word of God, but I'm recalling the Word of God in the Scriptures that I know that apply to what I'm talking about. And the only way you can do that is if you're in the Word. The only reason I can recall the Word is because I'm in the Word. And I don't say that to brag. I say that to say, guys, I need that Word to sustain me. That's why I'm in the Word so much. That's why I try to commit my time. I'm committing to memorize the Bible. I'm trying to memorize the whole book of Philippians right now. Why? Because there's so much goodness in that book. And I want that just swirling in my mind at all times. And I want to be able to pull verses and recall, and when I'm in prayer, just pray the word over myself instead of being driven by my flesh and by my feelings, which are demonic and they're constantly changing. Now, not all feelings are demonic. I want to say that right off the bat. But feelings are dangerous to live by. The good ones are fun. Love and you know, all of these other good feelings that we have, happiness and and things like that. But I don't find a lot of Christians praying from their feelings from a good place. Usually it's when we feel bad or we feel stuck, and then we begin to pray, and it's not in faith, it's flesh-driven, and there's no faith in that, and that's just a, it's not a fruitful place to be. So I want to get us walking in truth. I hope this is helpful. And I wrote a book about this, actually. I wrote a nine-week devotional. Many of you might know about it. It's called I Will Always Overcome. It's a nine-week devotional that's designed with prayers like the one that I prayed, with breakdowns of scriptures and with, with testimonies and with stories. It's three to five minutes a read per day. And it's going to help you reprogram your mind to begin to think this way. Now, to go even deeper in that, I just launched a page with Faithful. They're an amazing Christian company. Um, Bill Johnson's on there. Judah Smith's on there. A lot of well-known people. It's, it's gaining traction. And I am now with them. I'm so thankful. And what's amazing about this is that I am really trying to build a community of people who want to go deeper with the Lord. And so the first thing I'm going to do with this page is we're going to deep dive into my book. It's a 63-page book. 60. I'm sorry, 63-day devotional. So we're going to take one day per week, and I'm going to provide exclusive content. These aren't little TikToks. These aren't Instagram Reels. These aren't YouTube Shorts. These are well-recorded videos where I've put time and effort into them to go deeper into each day of this book. And so if you have this book, I think this would greatly benefit you, that you would Join us as we dive deeper into it. I'm talking 10, 15, 20-minute videos per day on this book. I'm going to give some more in-depth study and, and background and encouragement and scripture. And so, and if you subscribe, which this is a community that we're building, it's a great way to support our ministry, but also it's going to be um, very exclusive. And so it will have different tiers. There's three tiers. Number one is the highest The third and lowest tier, which will get you access to all of these videos, all of these teachings, is $9.99 a month. Now, with that, you will be able to view all the videos I upload. I won't upload any other videos for free. Um, You know, I'll continue. Obviously, I'll continue posting this podcast. I'll continue TikToks and Reels and, and on Instagram and on YouTube and all of these other things that I'm doing. But this is a special thing that I'm doing. It's a separate thing. Because I'm really trying to build a community of people that want to go deeper. And part of that is a commitment. You know, when you sow into something, you're committing to it. Um, people aren't going to flake out when they're sowing into it. Now, this is why I'm talking about commitment. Because the top tier, which is $49.99 a month, we are going to have a monthly Zoom. And that is where you're going to have direct access to ask me anything you want. Um, we can shoot questions back and forth. We can talk about the scriptures. We can talk about the book. We can talk about life, whatever it is. It's going to be a closed private zoom with all of the tier one subscribers. Right now we already have two, um, that are going to join us. So (laughs) these, these two people, if no one else signs up, it'll be me and two other people for 90 minutes once a month. And we're going to talk and, and we're really going to get some good time together. The second tier, the middle tier Uh, Well, let me say this first. If you're the top tier, you get all of the other tiers included. So you get access to all the videos. And then tier two, you get a signed copy of my book and preferred email access. 
So everyone in tier one and two will have my email and I will favorite you as a contact. And whenever you email me, you can ask for content to be made. You can, you know, ask for guidance and things like that. And I will be responding to people who sign up for tier one and two. You know, I have over 1.1 million followers on all social media. It's impossible to keep up with comments and messages and all these things. But on Faithful, I will be responding to every comment, to every message. And so it, it really is a community that we're building. And so as I mentioned this book, I want you to know that we're going to be diving into it for the next 63 weeks. That's 15 months. So make sure you hop on because it's going to be amazing. Again, you can buy the book on my website, shanewinnings.com, or on Amazon for $10. Just search for I Will Always Overcome. If you want to know more about the scriptures or get a Christian education, you should check out Faith International University at faithiu.edu. They are an amazing accredited Bible college. You can get a, a bachelor's, master's, or a doctoral degree. And Here's the best part. You can do it online at your own pace. Many of our missionaries do it, and it's incredible. You get to pick when you go to class. Your homework and assignments are due at the end of the week, so if you're busy like me, you have a flexible schedule, this is a great way to go to school. So go check it out, faithiu.edu. Hit request, more information, tell them Shane sent you, and my buddy John, who's the vice president and dean of students, will help you out. We're having a massive stadium event on September 3rd in Frisco, Texas. You can check it out at genz4jesus.com. We are gathering 50,000 people, 1,000 from each state, to come represent, to pray for our nation. That's what we're doing. We believe the nation can be changed. The nation will seek God again. Again, you can follow me on all socials, Shane.Winnings on Instagram, Real Shane Winnings on TikTok, and just search for my name on YouTube. Finally, let me pray. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for these friends who are listening, and I pray right now, any sickness they're going through in their bodies, any pain, any limitation would be gone right now. I thank you, God, that they would be totally healed now in the name of Jesus and for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining, guys. We will see you next time.